Hey, this is Charles with uh, Historical Gaming, and tonight I wanted to show you a game that I've been kind of keeping an eye on called Wilderness Empires by uh, Worthington Games. I've been really interested in the French-Indian War lately, mostly because I've been um, playing a game called Songs of Drums and Tomahawks, which is a uh, $8 rule set from Ganesha Games, and I really enjoyed learning more about the period. Uh, there's also a few other good games out there, like Wilderness War, uh, by GMT Games, but this one is a very light and very nice looking uh, introductory type of game to uh, the French Indian War. There's also a few acres of snow, um, which is really good. It's more card driven and it's got more of a Euro feel, and this one is designed more in the block system. So uh, what a block system is, is basically units have pips on them. They uh, In this game they all start at full, full strength, and you can see the two dots at the the top. And as the units take hits, they're just turned sideways. There's uh, nothing on the back, so when you're playing against an opponent, you wouldn't normally see what their uh, blocks would say. So as you move into a location, you battle, and as you battle, you, you take those pips out and stuff. The uh, rule set is about eight pages long, and the front two pages are basically fluff um, in the picture. So you're, you're talking about six pages of rules. The uh, setup of the game is very simple. Uh, the first thing you do is roll a special die. There's two types of die in the game. There's the battle die, which is the orange die, and the special die, which is the gray die. You roll this die, and it tells you whether you start on a blank result, maybe 1754, a hit result, or not a hit, but a um, rectangular thing is a summer, summer 1754. And then a, the arrow is spring 1755. So, each player has a set, I think, of 40 cards each, and you draw five cards. And uh, there are seasons in this game, so as you progress here, so we're starting in the summer of 1754, and uh, during the spring we can play one card. During the summer, we can play two cards, or during the fall, we can play one card. And there, there's also a wintering phase, too. The The artwork on these cards is just absolutely amazing. Um, really nicely done. The artwork on the counters is actually very nicely done. Sorry about that. It's blurry or not. It's hard to tell. Um, it's very easy to understand the map. Blue lines require a leader to go across. Uh, black lines, any troops can move from location to location. Um, so for the most part, units can move to the adjacent without a location without a leader. There's a maximum of 12 blocks that you can have in each location. Oops. And uh, let's see. There's sea movement, there's ports, there's Indian villages, so all the Indians are placed in the village with their name on it, and the uh, counter also has the name of the village on it, uh, or the name of the, the Indian troop. Um, and then during the wintering phase, all the Indians come back to their homeland territories if the British players have not burned their, uh, their villages. So these green uh, things represent their villages, and um, all the names of the towns are on there. Certain types of units have their names on there. Um, you'll see um, the white stripe indicates a, a weaker unit. This is a militia type unit. This is the Montreal unit. And uh, according to the setup rules here, which is like a whole page here, it tells you which location to put. So you'll put two regulars at 4 SP, which is full strength, two militia at 2 SP, which is full strength, and then a one star leader. So Braddock's in this game. Uh, Dumas, uh, Wolf, all kinds of cool leaders in here. Um, let's see. We talked about the units, the paths. So the sequence of play is the British player uh, has a new unit phase, and any cards that are applicable to that unit phase can be played during that phase, but he only gets one in the spring, like I was saying, and two in the summer and one in the fall. So he's got to be careful about how he plays all these cards, because if he plays all of his cards before the game ends, he does not get new cards. He basically has to deal with what he has. Um, so after the British player uh, has this new unit phase, 
uh, he has his move phase. So movement is pretty simple, and I'm hoping you can see this. Regular militia and Native American. So regular can move one, cannot battle. So nobody without a leader present can't battle. So these both say no. So regulars can move one. Militia and Native American can move two. But again, they can't battle without a leader present. Now you can attack somebody who doesn't have a leader present, but in order to attack someone, you have to have a leader. So your one star leader has uh, one move and he can battle after that one move. A two star leader and all the troops with him can move two spaces and battle. And then a three star leader can move up to three spaces and battle with all the units that participate with them. Um, if a leader is attacking a, uh, an opponent who has another leader in his uh, defense, you compare the leader ratings and get a leader uh, advantage. And so if you have a three star leader fighting a one star leader, you would get one extra gray dice as your, your battles. So the most you can roll in a battle is five die. And that's one per block that's participating. So if you've got 12 blocks fighting, you still roll three. Uh, if you have the leader advantage, you would get one of these gray dice. That's pretty much it. There are combat cards. Uh, let's see. There are com combat cards in the game which lets you add uh, extra dice and things like that. But you can never roll more than what you have. You don't roll twice or anything like that. It's uh, five and three is the most you can do. Uh, there are fortifications in the game, and uh, some of the locations uh, give you an extra battle die. So uh, you'll see a two here, special battle die, are applied to uh, the defender units occupying a fort. And then the victory point value is right here. And you'll see on each location it has the victory point value of what it's worth if the opponent t takes that from him. Now the object of the game is to get ten more uh, victory points than your opponent, which is tracked on this little board right here. So if I had one and he had 11, uh, he would win the game if he can maintain that control at the end of the wintering phase. Uh, battling, like I said, was uh, pretty simple. Uh, one battle die for each unit, up to five. One special battle die for leader advantage. One to three special battle die for the defender if the location is a fort. And one to three special battle die uh, for a card played by either player. Now, in the cards that you play, you cannot play the same card uh, twice in the same season, so that's important to remember. And uh, there's, it seems like there's a lot of flavor to this. Now, I just got this. I just got it stickered last night. It looks like a fun game and very easy to understand. Um, from what I've read online, people really like this game. Um, I am really impressed with the blocks. It's probably one of the thickest blocks and the, the most, uh, I hate to say perfect, but like the smoothest, well-painted um, block games that I've seen. Um, everything's really easy to understand as far as the rule set goes. It's quick and easy. Um, you know, it's just like some other block game systems where the, the rules for the victory are super simple. It's like you get 10 more than the other guy and you win the game. And that, that's pretty cool in my book. Uh, you've also got some discard sections here. So um, play one card, play two card, play one card. Oh, refuse to fight. So there's a, when you're going to battle, the guys with the white stripes, they can refuse to fight. So uh, this is a hit, and the person takes a step on their block, and this is a refuse to fight. And any militia units have to go to the refuse to fight area until after the battle's over. So we bring that guy over to here. And then once the battle's over, if they lost, they would go back to the area with the retreating unit. Uh, if the uh, I can't remember what it is. If the whole squad is eliminated, what happens? I think they go to the nearest closest town. And... Um, Let's see, refuse to fight, and regulars can never refuse to fight, and then uh, the last thing is probably the wintering phase, uh, where all the uh, Indians go back to towns, where they don't have their villages burned down, and uh, all the militia go back to their hometown. Not all of them, but there's, there's certain rules as far as that goes. So I hope you get a chance to check out this game. It's really nice looking. It uh, seems to be play well, and I'm hoping to get this to the table soon. And uh, thanks for watching.